Well, uh, they're promoting girls' education in the UN as well, but it's the day of the girl child, and they're focusing also on the lack of women at training in science and technology fields. You just heard Julia say most of her physics class is full of boys. And that's the case in many Western countries. While girls often do better at maths and science while at school than their male counterparts, that lead is not translating into their chosen professions. So let's have a look at some of the details. In 2010, only 15% of U.S. computer science undergraduates were female, and only 10% of Internet entrepreneurs across the world are women. Yet, 30% of the best-paid jobs for women are in the technology sector. I'm pleased to say women are bucking the trend, though. With me here in the studio is Anne-Marie Amfredon, who is the founder of the group STEM Mets, which works to encourage women to study science and technology, and Roma Agrawal. She's a structural engineer who has been working on London's famous building, the Shard. Thank you both very much for being with us. Why do you think it is, Anne-Marie, that girls just don't seem to follow through on science and maths when they are good at it? I think for girls there is no role models and no visible role models. They don't see it as something that they can go into or as a profession that works with that works for them or maybe fits into maybe the stereotyping for their gender. So from very early we see that girls are given kind of pink toys and dolls toys rather than cars and trucks and kind of Lego and mechanic to play with. So we see a lot of that. Um, but also there are a number of uh, girls who maybe are, are fearful of the fact that if they are working in technology or in science, they won't be able to also be a good mother, for example, or be a good woman or be able to fulfill some of their other roles. So they Where don't... does that myth come from? I mean, that to you must seem bizarre when you've it done does. so well. <laughs> it does seem really bizarre, but I think it, it definitely comes from media and kind of the images that are put to girls early on. They don't see women scientists, for example, on television or in the media or anywhere else where they kind of get these images uh, coming in. So it, for them, it, it, it isn't compatible. Being Working in technology and kind of being that computer coder in a dark room doesn't fit with being a mother or doesn't fit with being a woman or doesn't fit with, you know, being happy and successful. And for you, you were one of three girls girls out of 70, I think, studying maths and computer science at university. Yeah. What was that like? Um, I was used to it. <laughs> Often when you're the only girl in, in class, you're the only girl before you go to university and when you're studying when you're younger. So university is just a continuum of that. And even in industry, you're often the only woman in the room. So it's not really, you're not really, uh, it's not really an issue at all. <laughs> you're nodding your head, Rome. You agree? That's your experience as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a structural engineer and I think we are, on average in the industry, about 7 or 8% women in the industry. My company's a bit better with 20% women, but I'm very, very often the only woman in the room and often also the the youngest. Is it different though in India where maths and science and girls, the mix seems to be a bit better? Absolutely. I think I, I was brought up in India so I lived there until I was 16 and the fact that I loved maths and science was not strange. It wasn't out of the norm. We all studied it together and so I'd like to see that mentality kind of brought forward to lots more countries as well. Anne-Marie, uh, I think it's okay if I tell people that you are somewhat of a genius. Is that what it takes in order to achieve, though? Do you have to be that good? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I'd say I'm not really that much of a genius. There, you don't have to be a genius to succeed within mm -hmm. STEM. There you got are so your many Masters roles. from Oxford University at the age of 20. 20 I yes. think that says something. <laughs> um, but I guess that was just, I was, I was fortunate enough to be nurtured um, and to be allowed to explore my passion. Now, nurtured by who? by my parents um, and by those around me, you know, it was, it was strange, but it was Amory's thing. That was what Amory was allowed to do. She was an exception. So it was fine that I didn't play with dolls' houses or, you know, like pink. It was fine that I was taking apart my dad's tape player and, and putting it back together. And Roma, who encouraged you? Was it your teachers, your parents, a combination of both? Yeah, I think my parents again. So my dad used to sit me and my sister down every Sunday morning in, the, in our living room and we used to put together Lego toys and Meccano and so on. Um, I'm a structural engineer and she's an architect, so I'm sure that's had a huge impact on her. You were just saying um, about 7% of women mm. are engineers. Here in the UK, it's 9%. We've got some pictures of the Shard, which you've worked on, now yeah. one of the most famous and iconic <laughs> buildings in the world. Was that a very male environment for you to work in, and was that off-putting at all? Um, I don't find it off-putting. Um, you know, my office is very mixed. It's very normal um, to be in a room with a mixed group of people. I think on site, it is definitely more male-dominated. And I think it comes down to having confidence, and that's definitely something that I've had to develop over the years. Do you think women have issues across the board with confidence? I think they do. Um, so I, I absolutely, I think I think some women do find it difficult to kind of posture and and be shouting. I guess. Maybe and is that the, the way guys. we're raised? <laughs> oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think some women are raised that way. Um, definitely, again, at the kind of societal level, it's kind of 
you're the, the submissive one, you're the slightly more quiet one, you only speak when you're spoken to. I think sometimes we see quite a lot of. I mean, Roma, you may have heard of this book, Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. Absolutely. And that phrase now is banded around a lot. I mean, yes. do you see women, enough women leaning in? Um, not enough. I would love to see more. Um, I'm quite a fan of the book, actually, and I took the advice about sitting at the table quite literally not very many days ago. So I think it's, it's very important. I think we have to push ourselves, even if we seem to be quite confident in ourselves. Um, often there's an internal struggle inside, you know, trying to push us forward more. So that's something we need to work on. And Marie, how do men react to your intelligence? Um, so normally they think I'm, <laughs> they don't expect me <laughs> to turn up. I remember at work, um, there was one person I met who was expecting me to kind of look a little bit more geeky, I guess, with the glasses and everything, and look a little bit more. I don't know what he was expecting, to be honest. So some people um, sometimes are intimidated, but I think for others it's they recognise me as someone who does have something to say and something smart to say to bring to the table. And Roma, do you feel you have to be better and smarter? Um, not necessarily. I think it comes down to the confidence again. I think if we've got an opinion that we want to um, suggest to the table, we need to just speak up. And I think if it's valid, you're well, you're well prepared and you know what you're talking about, then they will listen to you and respect it. It is so fantastic to hear both your stories. I think Thank you're you. both fantastic. It's great <laughs> to have had you here. Much. Thank you for sharing with us. Thanks.